So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography P. Com. In today's video, I want to cover what is a PXD file. In this video, we'll cover what this file format is, how to open one and the various compatibility that it offers, and some disadvantages that you would want to keep in mind. I'll also cover some practical use cases of this format. So by the end of the video, you'll have some valuable insight about it specifically, and if it's a good option for your workflow. Note you can find timestamps in the description down below, and you can also scrub through the video to skip to a more relevant section if you'd like. But with that said, let's get started. In today's digital world, we're all inundated with various file extensions, many of which require specialized software to open. And without the necessary software, you can't open or preview their contents. The .psd or Photoshop document file is surely one of these file types. And it's no surprise if you came across one recently and your computer didn't recognize it. Thankfully, there are many free tools available to open or convert one of these with ease. And there's no real need to license Photoshop if you don't plan on using this file format exclusively. So to help, this video will cover both how to open and convert one, but we'll also cover its history briefly, some of its strengths and its key disadvantages compared to other file formats. So what exactly is a PSD file? The PSD or Photoshop document file is the proprietary file format created for the now infamous graphic editor, Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop publicly released in the 1990s was specifically designed for graphic design work and digital imagery, but it and its native file format have risen to the ranks of what many consider the industry standard editor for digital imagery. And the .psd file remains the software's default file format for saving files unless you specify otherwise. Unlike many other graphic file formats, PSDs can contain much more information, and it's pretty complex in design. In this case, it can house multiple images, layers, filters, masks, text, shapes, vector paths, and effects. They also support various color gamuts ranging from RGB, CMYK, lab, along with 32-bit color. And while you can use this file to house a single image, the most common use case is saving an editable project. Say, for example, your retouch a picture with various color grades, healing, and compositing effects. And in fact, you can save the exact state of any document with hundreds of layers, adjustments, masks, and selections to a maximum file size of two gigabytes. Sure, the PSD file looks like a single flat image on the surface, but once open, it reveals all of the individual layers, adjustments, and other effects housed in that file. And this functionality combined with Photoshop's large toolset delivers never-ending possibilities in how you can edit the final image. It's also a key reason Photoshop as an editor provides an entirely non-destructive workflow, since you can always go back afterwards to edit the file and make tweaks when necessary. Thus, given this level of power and flexibility, the PSD format along with the TIFF format, which we'll cover later, is generally the go-to amongst professional editors, graphic artists, and photographers alike. However, as a native file format owned by Adobe, it's supported best by the company's Creative Cloud Suite. Using the format on other third-party editors generally results in missing features or compatibility issues. Even so, there are many applications that support this file format to a large degree. But quick commercial break. Did you know Photographer PX launched a sister company called pxpresets.com? Well, if you didn't, pxpresets.com is going to be your next one-stop shop for Adobe Lightroom desktop and mobile presets. On PX presets, you can find a large selection of presets to shortcut the process of getting high quality images and consistent branding across your imagery. We have a large selection of styles that are well-suited for food, products, portraiture, fashion, beauty, and much more. We're also running a special right now for our mega collection. So if you want to upgrade your entire workflow in one fell swoop, now's a great opportunity. So if you're in the market for some high quality Lightroom presets to shortcut your workflow, feel free to check out pxpresets.com. With that said, back to the video. How do you open a PSD file? While Photoshop is a powerful editor, not all of us feel the need to license it monthly just to open a single file. So what can we do if we only need to open a PSD file, but we don't have Adobe Photoshop? Thankfully, there are many ways to open this file type, and I'm gonna list those options right now. I also wanna point out all of these applications are free. 
If you're wanting to open a PSD file on both Mac and Windows, here are your options, GIMP, Google Drive, Pixlr, PhotoP, and PSD Viewer. If you're a Mac OS user, your best option is Apple Preview, while if you're a Windows user, your best options are Paint.net and IR Fan View. There are other software options as well, such as Coral Draw, Coral Paint Shop, ACDC Photo Studio, and Adobe Photoshop Elements, all of which support .psd files. But all of these applications only offer a free trial period, and they're not entirely free. There are also many online converters, similar to PSD Viewer, so you don't have to use one of these softwares specifically. Now, with that said, let's cover the disadvantages of PSD files. And while this format has many advantages, it does come with some downsides. Let's cover those two notable ones now. As a native and proprietary file format to Adobe, you have limited external support outside of their Creative Cloud suite. And while many third-party applications do support this file format, you rarely get the same level of control or extensive functionality. There are always a few functions that remain unsupported and inaccessible. Not to mention this file format isn't fully supported on either Windows or Mac OS. You get only partial editing options here as well. So overall, to use this format does require a dedicated editor and long term it eventually requires Adobe Photoshop itself. Now also depending on your use case, PSDs can get quite large and often near their maximum file size of 2 gigabytes. And suppose you're working on a series of 10 images for a project, in that case you can quickly create several dozen gigabytes worth of files adding a considerable demand to your file storage workflow. And if your file storage backup and delivery workflow are not prepared to handle such large file sizes, this can surely become a deal breaker. Overall though, the PSD file is quite a useful format, even though it's proprietary to Adobe. And it's a format that we use regularly here at Photography PX to create illustrations and graphics for our website and other designs that we have for some of our other companies. It's also great to store complicated retouching projects or composites, perfect for high-end beauty images or our real estate listings. But besides that, that's pretty much the gist of PSD files, and that's pretty much all you need to know about them. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the content of it valuable, insightful, and you learned something meaningful here. If you're new to our channel, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. If you have any comments, questions, or feel like I've overlooked something in the course of the video, please let me know down below. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, Photography P. Dot com.